caught in the bloody chair again. G'day mates, Nate the Aussie here. How you going? Before I get on with this subject's video, I have actually posted up. I have posted up a video uh, describing that I'm back and the things that I'll be getting into. If you haven't seen that, link is in the description below on that video. Go and check that out. But this video is actually a response to another YouTuber to whom I'm actually subscribed. Uh, he's a really interesting guy. He posts some really interesting videos on historical content, really informative as well. He does a lot of a lot of research, really, really great guy to watch. His name's Metatron. So if you're not subscribed to him and you like historical content, definitely check him out because he makes amazing stuff. Now, he actually recently posted up a video about six days ago, six, seven days ago, by the time this video is up, about using a Jingasa as a sort of sort of like a buckler and also as a weapon now I'm not going to go into a huge bit of depth on what the Jingasa is because Metatron goes into a bit more detail and also the the channel that he's responding to I believe it's Japan at war he also goes into detail as well and actually tries some experiments out so definitely check out their videos on the matter as well I'll put Metatron's video in the in the description below so I'm going to be responding to his video now I'm not actually disagreeing with what with uh, what Metatron is saying in his video I actually completely agree with what he's saying. This video is m more a sort of, as, I suppose, an addition. So something that I think could also be considered when looking at the Jingasa as a weapon or a, I suppose, as a shield. So if you're wondering why exactly I'm talking about this in terms of Japanese martial arts, well we actually see this these kinds of techniques being used in uh, different systems such as Yagyu Shinganyu uh, and so on and so on. Uh, you see it being used as a shield as well as a weapon. Now, Metatron actually talks about this in his video, and I think this is probably one of the most crucial points to start off with here. The Jingasa, using it as a shield or a weapon, is a last resort. It is an emergency technique. It is something to use in a very specific emergency scenario. Long story short, you are not really going to see any warriors before they go into battle, even though they've got their weapon with them, taking off their helmet and then using that as a weapon. That's not going to be the case. It's going to be someone who has lost his weapons and it's using that as a last resort. Now, does that mean it never happened? Well, no, of course not. And what I'm actually going to be suggesting in this video is something extra that I think should also be, or could also be considered if you, when using the Jingasa as a weapon or a shield. Now, it's interesting when you're looking at uh, the uh, Shinganyu, uh, sh sorry, Yagyu Shinganyu um, uh, practitioners when they're using when they're doing these techniques, is you, if you actually have a look at the Ashigaru here, he doesn't, he has what appears to be a wakizashi in his belt, which is fair enough. He doesn't use that. He seems to only use the Jingasa as sort of his sole, uh, basically as his sole weapon in those instances. Now, that might be because it's just for the purpose of the technique and that wakizashi is there to demonstrate other techniques after. That might be the case. And if that's the case, sure. That makes perfect sense. But just seeing the video on its own, uh, and the technique on its own, I was surprised that he didn't also draw that as a weapon. Now, I have something here with me. It's a buckler. Now, is this a Jingasa? No. Uh, is it the closest thing I have to a Jingasa that I have on my person? Yes. So he's holding it out here. He's not holding it out here like that, because obviously the Jingasa has corners that come down off the sides down here like that. So he's holding it out in front of him like this. What he's doing is, again, he's using this to deflect and so on. But, accidentally hit my print. Damn. But um, he doesn't use his wakizashi. Now again, this is a wooden variant. I don't have a steel wakizashi on my person as of yet. But for me, it would make more sense to actually draw that and have that as a weapon and this also to deflect with. So you're able to deflect the weapon and also deliver stabs and cuts. It doesn't quite make sense to me if he's only using this. If I am imagining an Ashigaru on the battlefield and he is driven to the case where he literally has to take off his helmet and use it as a shield and a weapon, it would make more sense to me that he would also draw either a Wakizashi and, well, sorry, a Wakizashi or his Tanto. Because to be frank, as we know, and Metatron also mentions this numerous times, and he's correct when he says this, the Katana or the Tachi but they're both only meant to be secondary weapons or sidearms, I suppose, if you use a modernary term. They're not, they're, sorry, a modern term. The only time we hear about katana being used as primary weapons usually is during castle sieges, when there's not as much room to wield a pole arm. But from what we know, especially in the Sengoku Zidai, 
which is the 15th century, mid 15th century through to the uh, to the end of the very end of the 16th century. That is when you're looking at mostly pole arms on the field. So to get to the stage where you're only using your helmet, you would have to first of all lose your pole arm, then you'd also have to lose your katana or tachi, then you'd have to lose your wakizashi, and then you'd also have to lose your tanto to get to the point where you're literally only using this and nothing else. Now, in what cases would he actually take off his helmet? That is an interesting question. And Metatron actually posits this question to us. He says, what would you do in this situation? What would make more sense to me is if, for example, I have literally no weapons at all. I might just maybe have a tanto on me or something. And the cords of my helmet are broken. Um, so, for example, the helmet is just sitting on my head. One smack on that is going to make it fly off my head and I'm not going to have it on me anyway. In that case, I can see myself quickly taking it, quickly taking it off. And, ho and holding it using that, using the cords in here to grab onto and use it as a shield and then draw my tanto. In that case, I could see that happening. But again, going back to the whole only using this as a weapon, I can also see Ashigaru using wakizashi or a tanto alongside with this, as opposed to only using this as a weapon. So, would it be more practical to, if you were disarmed with all of your different weapons, to take off your helmet, use it as a shield, and then as a weapon. So let's just say, for example, for pure for pure hypothetical purposes, let's just say that you've even lost your tanto and your wakizashi. So that's not even in the picture. You literally only have your hands. Actually, I should get rid of this. Now you have a helmet that you can take off and use as a shield um, and a weapon at the same time. Now again just remembering that this would not very rarely, at least in my opinion, and this is where I also agree with Metatron and Japan at War, is that they mentioned that the Jingasu would mainly be used to deflect and to parry, uh, as opposed to just statically block the strike coming in. Let's just say, okay, that's the situation, you don't even have any weapon. Would it be more practical to take off your helmet in a fight instead of rushing in and trying to grab and grapple with the guy? Again, one important thing to remember is here, no matter what you do, you're going to be at a massive disadvantage. Well, in my case, it would personally just depend on how well fitted that helmet is to your head, because if that helmet's well fitted, uh, two things. One, there's no point on taking it off, because it's still at least protecting your head. If you take that off, you have no head protection. The second reason is, if it's well fitted to your head, you will very likely not have time to untie it and then take it off while you're under attack by an opponent who's trying to kill you. For me, it would make more sense if the cord was already really loose or broken so that if it gets hit, it's gonna fall off my head anyway. I might as well, in that case, take it off, use it as a shield or a, a buckler, I suppose you can, you can say in that case. I think that makes more sense for me. Also, many thanks to Metatron as well for his video explaining this. He mentioned some really good points that I think really need to be considered when we're thinking about this idea of using the Jingasa as a helmet and a shield. And I also want to thank him for all of the work that he does um, and all of the study videos that he has released for us to enjoy on various different historical topics. But for all you guys, let me know if you agree or disagree let me know in the comments below, because I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think on this as well, because this is just my opinion, just based on my own experience with sparring and with, with weapons and so on. I would much more like to hear your guys' experience as well, or even if you don't have any experience, what would you do in that case? But until then, I will see you mates in the next video. Bye-bye! Bye-bye.